The Gospel of Luke, Chapter 17, Kingdom Forgiveness, Luke 17, 1, KJV. Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. It is impossible, but that offenses come to cause a believer in Jesus Christ to stumble, to set a snare for a believer. Woe unto him through whom they come. Any time the word woe is used by Jesus is speaking about a future suffering or wrath. See Matthew 23 for Jesus' seven woes. A millstone. A large circular stone with a hole in its center that was placed inside a much larger mill to crush the wheat and barley to make flour. It weighed more than the average woman or man, depending on the size of the mill. One of these little ones, these are the children which believed that Jesus was the Christ, and those publicans and sinners that believed in Jesus. Matthew 18, 1 to 14, and Mark 9, 40, 43. Luke 17, 3, 6. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day, turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. If he repent, forgive him. We forgive today because we are forgiven first. The disciples in Jesus' day had to forgive others first to be forgiven by God. Matthew 6, 12, KJV. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Faith as a grain of mustard seed. No one has the faith to move a sycamine tree into the sea today. We are not living when the gospel of the kingdom is being preached and signs and wonders were occurring to verify the message and messenger were from God. There are no signs given for us today in the dispensation of grace, not even leading up to the rapture of the church. Luke 17, verse 7, 10, Which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him by and by when he has come from the field, Go and sit down to meet? And will not rather say unto him, Make ready wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink? Doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, We are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. When ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, the servant was required to do something first in order to get something in return from his master. Luke 12, verse 35 to 48. Where are the nine? Luke 17, 11 to 14, KJV. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, shew yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They recognized Jesus as the only one who could heal them. Go, shew yourselves unto the priests. The law required if a leper were cleansed of their leprosy, They were to go have a priest examine them to declare them clean, Leviticus 14, Luke 17, 15, 19, KJV. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. This stranger, nine Jews, were healed of leprosy, but they did not return to thank God. The one who did was a Samaritan, one of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Luke seventeen twenty to 21 KJV And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. When the kingdom of God should come, the Pharisees wanted to know the date of the kingdom's arrival.
The problem was that if they did not believe inwardly that Jesus was the Christ, they would never see the kingdom. The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Jesus was preaching that the kingdom of God was at hand, and it would come if Israel would repent inwardly. They did not repent, and they rejected the kingdom by inwardly rejecting Jesus as their Christ. Luke seventeen twenty two twenty three KJV. And he said unto the disciples, The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they shall say to you, See here or see there. Go not after them, nor follow them. The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, During the terrible times of the tribulation period, the believers in those days will desire to have just one day with their Savior, and ye shall not see it. Those tribulation saints will not see even one day of Christ's presence during the seven years of the tribulation period. They will have to wait until Daniel's 70th week comes to an end. Then they will see him forevermore. Daniel 9, 24-27 See here or see there. During the tribulation period... There will be people saying the Messiah is over here or he is over there to try to lure believers to follow the false Christ. Luke seventeen twenty four twenty five KJV. For as the lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. So shall also the Son of Man be in his day. When the Son of Man returns, he will be seen all over the place as lightning, not just in a single solitary place. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. He must be beaten and crucified and go into heaven before returning to set up his kingdom. Luke seventeen twenty six to 30 KJV And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In the day when the Son of Man is revealed... This refers to when the abomination of desolation is set up in the temple and believers flee into the wilderness where they will be protected by God for three and a half years. Those that give up all that they have and flee will preserve their life. Those that remain will perish at the hands of the Antichrist. Matthew twenty four twenty five, Luke seventeen thirty one to KJV. In that day he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Remember Lot's wife, she looked back, Genesis 19, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. They will take the mark of the beast and be lost eternally. Whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Whoever flees to the wilderness will have God's protection and provision, and they will be blessed for eternity. Luke seventeen thirty four thirty seven. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken, and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken, and the other left. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. One shall be taken. The ones that are taken are taken to judgment and then to hell. Revelation 19, 70, 21, KJV. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image.
These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. The other shall be left, the ones left go into Christ's kingdom. Israel has an earthly reward, so they are left here on the earth to enter their kingdom. This is not the rapture of the body of Christ, as many teach. The rapture is not revealed until it is revealed to the Apostle Paul many years later. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51, KJV. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, KJV. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Where, Lord, where will the ones be taken to? The answer is that they will be taken to where the eagles be gathered together. Revelation 19 to 21, Gospel of Luke chapter 18, Praying Always, Luke 18, 1 5, KJV. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge, which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Avenge me of mine adversary. Who is Israel's adversary in scripture? The devil. First Peter 5, 8, 10. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Luke eighteen six to 8 KJV, And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? Revelation 6, 9-10 And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? He will avenge them speedily. During the tribulation period, believers, his own elect, will be crying night and day to be avenged like the woman to the judge. They will be avenged speedily at his second coming as their flesh will be destroyed, and they will be taken to hell until the great white throne judgment. Revelation 6:11. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. A lot in Israel will give in and take the mark of the beast to fill their stomachs and to stay in their nice homes with their jobs. They should flee into the wilderness and allow Christ to provide for them. But sadly, only a remnant of Israel will remain faithful to Christ, endure unto the end. Psalm seventy nine eighty three and Matthew twenty four verse thirteen. Two men went up to pray. Luke eighteen nine twelve KJV. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself: God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. The Pharisee, he represented the religious in Israel who were trying to be justified by the things they did and not by faith in Jesus as the Christ. Luke 7.30 But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. Luke 18.13 KJ And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven but smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. The publican, he represented those that had heard the gospel of the kingdom, that had repented, 
and were baptized with John's baptism of repentance. Luke 7, 29, And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God, being baptized with the baptism of John. Luke eighteen fourteen KJV, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted, justified righteous before God. Luke 18, verse 15, KJV. And they brought unto him also infants, that he would touch them. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. The kingdom of God, the kingdom is a literal, physical, and visible kingdom on this earth that comes after the time of Jacob's trouble. A child would recognize Jesus immediately as the Messiah, whereas a Pharisee or Sadducee had to filter his words through all the tradition they had learned. Luke 18, verse 21 to 27, and he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they that heard it said, Who then can be saved? And he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. Jesus told this rich man to keep the commandments of Moses in order to obtain eternal life, and to sell all that he had which was not commanded in the law of Moses. It was a requirement, however, for those at that time to enter the kingdom, Plus, they must go and follow Jesus as he and his followers warned Israel that the kingdom that they longed for was at hand. We should never tell someone who wants to be saved today in the dispensation of grace to keep the commandments and to sell all that they have and to go and follow Jesus to have eternal life. That is not the program we are under today. We are under the dispensation of grace, which was dispensed unto the Apostle Paul after the cross. We tell people today to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for them according to scriptures, was buried, and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. It is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. This has absolutely nothing to do with a door at the gate of a city, as many want you to think. This isn't meant for us today in the dispensation of grace. It was meant for only those alive while the gospel of the kingdom is being preached as at hand. Luke 18, 28 to 30. Then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time, and in the world to come, life everlasting. The world to come, this is a reference to the ages to come found in Ephesians 2, verse 7, Ephesians 2, 7, KJV, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. It is speaking about the future kingdom on the earth. Luke eighteen thirty one KJV. Then he took unto him the twelve and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, And all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and shall be mocked, and spitefully entreated, and spitted on. And they shall scourge him, and put him to death. And the third day he shall rise again. And they understood none of these things. And this saying was hid from them, neither knew they the things which were spoken. Remember that these sayings were hid from them, that Jesus was going to be rejected, crucified, and on the third day rise again. They understood none of these things, and this saying was hid from them. This would later be revealed to them after Christ was risen from the dead, which we will see in chapter 24 when Jesus opens their understanding to them. Thou son of David, Luke 18.39 And it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging, 
And hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passeth by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked him, that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, who did the people of Jericho tell the blind man was passing by at that time? Jesus of Nazareth, not the son of David. The blind man acknowledged Jesus as the son of David, which meant that he was the king of Israel. It was Jesus' title verifying that he was the rightful descendant to sit on David's throne as Israel's king. Have mercy on me. By making this request, he showed that he believed that Jesus was the Messiah, and for his faith he received his sight. Luke eighteen forty to 43 KJV And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith hath saved thee. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God.